Welcome to Dr. PT's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video, we're going to be looking at molar relationships in an equation. This is also known as stoichiometry, and we're going to be using the idea of limiting an excess reagents to identify exactly how much of a product or a reactant that we need. Before we go any further, we need to understand what stoichiometry or molar relationships or molar ratios are. First of all, stoichiometry is the calculations of the quantity of reactants or products in a reaction. And this all stems from the idea of the law of conservation of mass. The idea that you cannot create or destroy mass or, therefore, atoms. So if, for example, I have two hydrogens on the left-hand side of my equation arrow to show transformation, on the right-hand side, I need two hydrogens also. And this is the whole fundamental behind balancing an equation. You cannot make or destroy atoms. Another way to look at this is that I have two moles of hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, and I have two moles of hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side. So when we're dealing with moles, we call this the stoichiometric ratio or the molar ratio. Now, this molar ratio, as we're going to call it from now on, is the proportion of of reactants to each other and to products. Importantly, this is theoretically. So do, it doesn't take into account that sometimes you can have side reactions, other things going on. But what it does say is if I have one mole of calcium carbonate, I'm going to obviously use the designation N for moles, then be, what we have to look at is the coefficients, so the big numbers in front of your compound or molecule in order to balance the equation. So for every one mole of calcium carbonate, I need two moles of nitric acid. We follow this logic of molar ratios that then produces, once those two are consumed in those quantities, one mole of calcium nitrate, one mole of water, and one mole of carbon dioxide. We can use these molar ratios in order to work out proportions of things that we don't know if we've got the balanced equation. For example, if we were to start off with 0.5 moles of nitric acid, we would use these coefficient numbers, these large big numbers in front of our compounds and molecules to help us to work out how much of calcium carbonate that we need. So if this is 0.5 and we've got a ratio of two to one, what operation you need to do going from 2 to 1 here? You need to divide by 2. So you do that same operation with the number that you are given. And so we need 0.5 divided by 2, 0.25 moles of calcium carbonate for there to be a complete reaction. And then when working out the products, you look at the relationship between the one that you're looking at here, 0.5, and the unknown. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio because the coefficients are 2 and a 1, and obviously 1s aren't shown in chemistry. So we've got 0.25 produced with these ratios, and so forth. Same relationship is to water, as it's a 2 to 1, and with carbon dioxide, that's 2 to 1. And we can use these molar ratios in order to work out the quantity, whether that be in a mass, in moles, or if we're dealing with gases and volumes, later in other videos we'll be looking at volumes of gases and concentration and volumes of solutions. And so it's a really useful tool that's linked to a balanced equation. So let's look at a question here. This question, I'm going to just give you a second to pause and read for it. Okay, so we are going to be using these idea of molar ratios that we just talked about in order to answer this question here. What could the maximum mass of calcium nitrate be using these quantities here? I would approach this first of all by just looking at what you know and what you need to find out on your equation. So if we just dissect this, we've got 6.3 grams. Well, that's a mass and that's of calcium carbonate. So we know we've got some mass, and I like to use a tick for anything that we know of the calcium carbonate. And then we've got 6.3 grams of nitric 
acid. And so we've got the mass of this. And again, a tick is something that we know. Then it says calculate the maximum mass of calcium nitrate. So this is calcium nitrate here, and we need to work out the mass there. Now, the reason we're going to have to use moles to jump between these is that mass is incomparable between different compounds because they have different molecular masses, MRs. The one thing in chemistry that is consistent throughout, no matter what mass of compound or molecule you're dealing with, is the idea of moles. So what we're going to do is take the information that we know in the question and just put it in a clear format. So what I would do is only include in here, in this grid, everything on the left are reactants and only what you know some information about or need to find out. So we've got calcium carbonate and nitric acid. And then on the right hand side of this grid, that's reserved for any products, anything on the right hand side of the arrow. Here, we're trying to work out calcium nitrate, so we're going to put that there. You can see here, that initial labelling of the balanced equation allows me to quickly fill out this grid. Now, the left-hand column here is going to be really important for how we calculate exactly the maximum mass of calcium nitrate. But again, I get like people to follow the idea that let's know what we're aiming for. We're trying to get the mass of the calcium nitrate. And then what we're going to do is actually put in what we know. So we've got 6.3 grams of calcium carbonate. So let's just put that there. And then cross it off as you go along in the exam. It just helps you be really methodical. And then we've got nitric acid at 6.3 grams as well. So we're going to put that there. So now we work out the molecular mass, the MR for each of these compounds. So calcium carbonate comes out a nice 100. And nitric acid comes out at 63. Now it's important here, some people do get confused. Do not take into account any of the coefficients at this stage, okay? So often I see students make the MR twice, the nitric acid. Remember, that MR of 63 is the MR of a unit of nitric acid. So this whole thing here is worth 63, okay? The coefficient there just says you've got two lots of these for every one calcium carbonate that's reacting. So don't use that. Okay, so now we work out the number of moles of each of these. And this uses the nice relationship of N equals M over MR. Literally divide this value by this value, that will give us the number of moles of calcium carbonate. So that comes out as 0.063. And we do the same process for this column here to tell us the number of moles of nitric acid, and that comes out as 0.1. At this stage, we are looking at reacting these two moles together. But we know that we have a ratio of for every one calcium carbonate, we have to react two moles of nitric acid to it because that's what our equation has told us. So that's what we're filling out here in the molar ratio. And casting our attention back to the equation, we know it's one mole of calcium carbonate to every two moles of nitric acid forms one mole of calcium nitrate. It also forms one mole of water and carbon dioxide, but they're not of relevance to answer this question, and that's why we've only got one column here. So whilst we're at it, we might as well fill the molar ratio here. So the relationship, the molar relationship from the equation is telling us whatever value of calcium carbonate we have here, we need twice the amount of nitric acid in order for it to be used up and forming calcium nitrate. One of these reactants is what we call the excess reactant. The excess reactant is that reactant which has a greater amount than needed to react completely. On the other hand, there's always a limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is defined as that reactant that has less moles than needed relative to the other reactants in your equation. And it's this reactant that determines how much of the products are made. So it's key one to identify. So at first glance, you might think, well, hold on, the 0.063 moles here 
is smaller than 0.1, so that would be the limiting reactant. But we also need to take into account the ratio that's given in our equation here because we need twice as many nitric acids to every one calcium carbonate. So a quick way to work out the limiting reactant is just to take the number of moles you worked out in this row here and divide it by the molar ratio here. And then what you can do is compare the values that you get for this calculation. And it's the smaller value that tells you that that's the reactant that is the limiting reactant. Here you can see we've got 0.063 compared to 0.05. This is smaller. So I know my nitric acid is the limiting reactant. So everything else must be the excess reactants. So in this case, it's just calcium carbonate. Now, we're not interested in calcium carbonate because we know we've got plenty of it. So we're just going to be focusing on this column and its relationship to the product. Now, this particular calculation in this box here only allows you to identify the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. Don't use it in the next stage because this is the actual number of moles that you have. So when we're looking at the molar ratio between our nitric acid and our calcium nitrate, we're looking at the relationship of this moles that we use, 0.1, how that relates to the number of moles of the product calcium nitrate we form. So our relationship here is 2 to 1. And to go from this number 2 to 1, the operation would be to divide by 2. We have to do the same operation to our number of moles of nitric acid that we have. So the answer to that is 0.05. And now we're in a position where we know the actual number of moles of calcium nitrate that is theoretically possible to achieve with these quantities. Then we just need to reverse back. So we've got the number of moles. You can always work out the MR because you have a periodic table. So the MR of calcium nitrate is 164. We use the equation N equals M over MR, but we're going to rearrange it to get the mass of the calcium nitrate. So that is rearranged is mass equals number of moles times, M, times MR. We're going to use this row here for our number of moles, 0.05 times the 164, and that gives us 8.2 grams. See, by extracting the information from the question and then laying it out in this grid format makes the actual question answer really easy to come about. What I'd like you to do now with this question is in a moment to pause the video and then have a go at trying to answer the theoretical mass of titanium that's produced using this grid format. Okay, so first of all, we should identify exactly what we need to work out, which is the titanium. Let's put a question mark above that. And then the information that we're given, we've got one gram of titanium chloride and we've been given 0.1 grams of magnesium. Just fill out the grid with this information. And it's helpful just to use that question mark just to help you realize what the goal at the end of this calculation is. And then extracting the information and putting it in the right columns. As with any of these molar relationship calculations, what we need to aim for is to work out the number of moles of both the titanium tetrachloride and the number of moles of the magnesium. And then we're going to work out which is the limiting and which one is the excess reactant. We're going to need the periodic table to work out the molecular mass of titanium tetrachloride. And that is 189.9. Gives a number of moles of 0.00526. So we're just going to round that up to four decimal places. Then we look for the ma molecular mass of magnesium, which is 24.3. Again, being careful not to use the coefficient here. That doesn't um, change the molecular mass at all. And we're giving number of moles to four decimal places. At this point, it's worth noting, always try to keep quite a few decimal places in your calculations and only round on the last step. Because you'll notice we have two significant figures for both of our pieces of information here. So we need to actually express our answer in two significant figures. But rounding up too early can accrue loads of inaccuracies and errors as we work through. When we look at the molar ratio, and this is taken from the equation. So we've got one titanium tetrachloride to 2 magnesium. So we just fill this column in here. You can't already see it. This particular row here helps you work out and identify which one's the limiting reagent as being the smallest. So what we're going to do is number of moles divided by the molar ratio. 
So using the answers of this calculation, we can see that the 0.0021 is smaller. So we know that this, the magnesium, is the limiting reactant. It will be the number of moles in the magnesium column at 0.0041 that's going to dictate how many moles of titanium that we produce. Another way of looking at this is if you just focus your attention on the number of moles of titanium tetrachloride at 0.0053. Well, the balance symbol equation is telling you you need twice as much magnesium in terms of moles. So 0.0053 times 2 to the calculation is 0.0106. And you can see that the actual number of moles of magnesium that we've got is a lot less than this. So therefore is the limiting reactant. We would need more than this for it to be excess. Going back to the idea that magnesium is the limiting reactant, what we then do is use the molar ratio between magnesium and titanium from the balance symbol equation, which is 2 to 1. And we know that if we were to go between 2 and 1, we'd need to divide by 2. So we're going to do exactly the same operation where with the number of moles of magnesium. So that is 0.0021. All that remains is to work out the mass of titanium Use the rearrange formula, mass equals number of moles times the molecular mass. So the molecular mass of titanium is 7.9, so we times those two numbers together. We get the answer 0.0982 grams. This is the final question of this video. What I want you to do is do it completely from scratch. So pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so first of all, you should have identified exactly what you need to find out, which is the mass of chlorine. And then we know some information about the HCl. And that is the mass of that HCl. That helps us construct our grid. We just need to fill out the column. Notice we don't need to work out which one's limiting or excess with this particular question, as we're only given information about one of the reactants. So we have to that every other reactant is in excess. So the potassium permanganate here must be excess, whereas the HCl is a limiting reactant. Used up the information, we've got 9.15 grams of the HCl. The molecular mass of HCl is 36.5. We need to work out the number of moles of HCl that we have, and that is 9.15 divided by 36.5, which gives us 0.251. We look at the molar relationship that is found in the balanced symbol equation. So we've got 16 HCl to 5 Cl2, and that's why we've displayed those on our headings there. So we just put those molar relationships here. Then if we want to go from 16 to 5, that is dividing our number of moles by 16, then multiplying the answer to that by 5. Or you can think of this as a fraction as 5 over 16s. So if we take the number of moles here and do that operation, we get the answer 0.078, our number of moles. Then we need the MR of just a single chlorine molecule, Cl2. And to work out the number of moles, we just do N times MR, which gives us the answer of 5.569. Because our least number of significant figures was three significant figures from the initial data of 9.15, our actual answer would be given to three significant figures at 5.57 grams. So in this video, we've been looking at using the stoichiometry or the molar relationships to work out reacting masses. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be looking at how we use a mixture of different units. So stuff such as gas volumes and solution volumes and concentration, but using the same idea of molar relationships. If you found this video useful, ensure that you like it and then ensure that you subscribe to the channel for new videos as and when they're updated.